Hey everyone, Kyle once again. <clears throat> Welcome back to another movie review, and on the next uh, movie review I'll be doing... <coughs> reviewing it re by reviewing a film, which... Which I do want to, I, I want to review, but... It's hard to say because it's from a particular director who nowadays... Nowadays suck, but back then... He directed a few films that were actually pretty decent, good, I would say. But more on that though. But and this to me, this was, to me, this was this was the last film that he did that was that was good. And since then, his films have been have been not worth watching because all of his films since then have been so horrendous, horrible, and well, above all, very shitty. And of course, um, this one I'm reviewing is Signs. And yes, Signs, which means, yes, M. Night Shyamalan. Yes, yes, M. Night Shyamalan, that's what I'm getting to. This is the last film that he, this is the, this was the last good film that he did, and since then, his, his films have been so shitty. He hasn't made a film, this is only back in 2002, and since then, he has not made one good movie since then. Now, before this, yeah, he did he did the Sixth Sense with with Bruce Willis and Haley Joe Osman. A lot of people like that movie. I think it's all right, but um, the, the as, as for Bruce Willis, I like and uh, Haley Joe Osman was was good, especially for because everyone was saying for him saying the famous line, "I see dead people," and of course with the course with the twist with with. At the end of the movie that everybody, I'm sure everybody knows about, and then after that, um, he did Unbreakable once again with Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson, and I thought it was pretty interesting, and I enjoy Unbreakable. And I even and and then it came this film. And it was hard for me to say which one I see is the best, either this film or Unbreakable. It's hard for me to say. Maybe I would say Unbreakable by just by a fraction, because because I because I saw because before I saw I saw Unbreakable I saw Science first, and I remember saw I saw this back in the, all the way back in the theater back way back in two thousand two really enough. I I remember seeing this way back in two thousand two in the theater. So yeah, I saw Unbreakable before Science though, but it is it's hard for me to decide which one. I go with what I think is what I think is I think Unbreakable to me is by just by a mere fraction, but Signs was was really is a good film, such as the stars Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix. Um, but this was this was the last this is the last good film that he did, M Night Shyamalan, because he directed The Village that sucked which. <sighs> Which, which, of course, with a, I don't know what I'm gonna say. It's it's trying to be it's trying to be like a uh, a monster movie, but it's not. And of course, on the whole thing with that twist at the end, it was it was a very it was a horrible twist. And then did then the next he did Lady in the Water with Paula Giamatti. That was as horrible as well, and. It's just hard to talk about all these films because all ever since ever after Signs, M. Night Shyamalan, he just keeps going, getting lower and lower and lower. The Village sucked. The Lady in the Water sucked. And then what was the next one? Um, trying to go by um what year? Uh, I believe um the next one was The Happening with Mark Wahlberg. It's <laughs> It's his, it's his first. Yeah, I remember the advertising back in you know um, the advertising like M Night Shyamalan's first R-rated movie. It's a comedy. I'm sure a lot of people will say that it's a more comedy than a horror. I think it's a comedy because every time I, I, I is every time I will is ain't which I haven't watched a long time. But the last time I watched it, I was laughing my ass off because it was so funny, not scary. Because the whole thing is the plants are the, really the killers that make people commit suicides. 
And then, then of course, the last airbender. Horrendous. And then... After Earth. Oh my god, After Earth. But Jaden Smith, he's, just, he's, not, he's not cut out. He's not cut out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Will Smith. Because I, I, I enjoy Will Smith as an actor. I enjoy Will Smith for all for most of the movies he's done. But his but his his son's just I'm sorry. The the best performance from his son who he did was when they were together again back in pursuit the pursuit of happiness. That's pretty much like the best film he's done, The Pursuit of Happiness. I did not like the Karate Kid. I did not like such I did not like this film. I'm sorry. After Earth sucked more. And that film deserves the Razzies it got. And then after that, they just, oh, because since um, did Airbender and After Earth, he decided to go back to his like the suspenseful, suspenseful roots, I should say, with the visit. I hate that visit. I need to yawn because this is almost just put, trying to put me asleep. Talking to him, my shim like Cause that's yeah, that's the point. M is his name, M Knight, because it makes me want to put because it makes me want to fall asleep. M Knight. Here, this is here. This is it. The end of the movie. Good night. I hate the visit to death. I hate it. Even the, when I remember the first like, oh, M Knight is back. He's not. And yes, I've seen. I saw the. Tra I've seen the tra trailer for his new film, which I have no interest in seeing. Split, with James McAvoy, with the with the, the character has like a lot of personalities, and I saw the trailer for Split. I have no interest in seeing it. If I did, it would probably if I do see it, I'll probably get pissed off more that M Night is still. He is without that one after 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 signs. He's turned out to be one of the worst directors. He's, he's without a doubt either my in my top three worst directors. Without a doubt, he's not made one good movie all ever since two thousand two, which is this which was came out fourteen years ago. It was four yeah it was fourteen years ago since this film came out and, ever, and since then M Night Shyamalan has not made a good movie since then. So yeah, so obviously this to me this is to me this is the last. The last good film that he has made, and but but beginning on the positive pot by getting beginning on the positive things with M Night now, he did a good job directing this film, except for his one scene that he stars in it as well, which he also, I'm sorry that he's not cut out to be an actor either, in my opinion. This is all opinion based though, but I did not like it. I did not like his scene when he was talking to Mel Gibson when he was sitting in the car. I think he was a very horrible actor. He even talks like he is like he is sound asleep the way he's talking. Oh, you know, I'm sorry for everything I've done, you know, and um, and don't go into my fa go in, don't go into my pantry, father. It's the way he the way he talks. It's not, he sounds like he's half asleep. I guess that's that's, that's why his, his, his part of his name is Night because it's making him wanna. He's talking like he is half asleep. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, that's what that's one epic I have. This is with him, his himself in that one scene. But, but for the most for the movie, he did a good. I thought he did, I thought he did a good job with the movie. Mel Gibson, I, I enjoyed. Uh, Walking Phoenix, I liked. Um, I thought it was because um, I thought it was like interesting with the well, an interesting take on the aliens because um, with the crops with the crop circles because. I don't think before 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 science came out, I think there was not too many movies that were exploring um, the, the 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 explanations of crop circles. You know how these were signs appearing like in the fields from different places. So I thought it was I thought it was an interesting take on with the crop circles, and and I thought I thought it was like a very uh, a, it was a subtle alien invasion movie. And what I mean by that it was like, it was quiet and low profile, sort of way, because how is this? What how are we mean by by these means? Because it's focusing on this one family on this isolated farm, which it, which is like a widespread area, almost like in the middle of nowhere, sort of way, 
and even though yeah they're close to the town though, but just how the way their their home is with this wide open space, and and you don't see many too much. You don't. It's not the type of alien movie where you see like all all cities blowing up like in um, Independence Day or something like that. Though where this all cities gets blown up or so many deaths and no, it's it's a it's a quieter way that it's a quieter alien invasion where they're just. It's it's focusing on this one family, how they're dealing with it. And you don't see too many like UFOs, like or an a swarm of aliens coming to them. No, you see like a very few of them that surround their house, which you'll see, that you can think on. So yeah, that's what I mean. It's like a low profile, quiet, uh, subtle alien invasion movie in a way, because it's focusing on this family on on this one farm, and from there. From their point of view, basically, and I and I thought it was an interesting take on an alien invasion movie, and and I and I give I give credit to M Night Shyamalan for that, I do. And of course he of course he helped on, um, a write on the stuff as well, because I thought okay for for his part for his for him writing on the part I thought he did an interesting take on it, so I did I gave credit to him for that. And and the Catholic the. the like I said, Mel Gibson, I thought he did a really good job. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, I like. And uh, Abigail Bre Abigail Breslin, um, who was who played who played the daughter, who would later go on to be in Zombieland and um, No Reservations, and also be in uh, Maggie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I thought she was. I thought she was really. I thought she was. She also did a good job. Um, for for the girl, she, for the time when she was a little girl, I thought she was not annoying. Um, because some so nowadays some, act, child actors today are do quite on, but back then she was not, and I and I give props for that. Rory Culkin, who was like, I believe he's the younger. Bro uh, I know he's the he's the brother of Macaulay Culkin, but I think he's the young the younger brother. I thought he was there. I thought he was decent. I still think that Mike, back for as a child as a child actor, so I think his brother Macaulay was better. Of course, with the Home Alone films and all that, though. But still, I thought he was decent. I don't think he was not horrible, but he was average. And that's basically, and that's of course, and that's, of course, was the rest of the cast. Um, there was the one who plays the cop. And of course, M Night's part, his role in the movie, which I'm sorry for that. He he does not he does he does not pass as, I don't pass him as an actor. His acting was not good at all. And this and the story the story is it focuses on this one this one family on this farm, and Mel Gibson as Graham. He plays. He used to be a priest. He lost his faith because um his uh, wife he she has died in in a car accident. Because it's because it was M Night's fault because he fell asleep while driving. He crushed her. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Thanks <laughs> to the character of M to the character of M Night. Thanks for making Mel for Graham for Mel Gibson's character lose faith in God. And that's yeah, that's and that's basically it. He's lost his faith in God, and so he's he's living with this with his with his with his. Daughter and son, his younger brother play a walking phoenix, and they one morning they wake up to it. They both wake up to a scream. They run to the cornfields. The dogs are barking, and you see the their crop the the cornfields says, "Lot of it's bent over. It forms the shape of a crop uh, circle or a sign, whatever." The crop circles, and I thought it was really good looking, cool looking designs of the crops of these weird um, images. Um, and then, how, whoa, well, how is this, how the things go? Like, one thing leads to another is that, um, um, one, like, one night when, the, when, um, Emil, Emil Gibson wakes up because his, um, Abigail, Abigail wakes, tells, Abigail Breslin tells, like, oh, there's a man outside the window, can I have a glass of water, please? 
and he takes her back to her room, and then he sees a shadowy um, figure on t standing on top of the roof, and he gets his brother out, and and I thought this was, I thought this was, this was kind of funny, where um, Walking Phoenix has, has, has like a little bit of plan to draw the guy, did, but think this is a, a guy, draw him out, like, you know, it's time for an ass whooping. And, um, you know, we both run in the opposite directions We're around the house to draw him in. And we start acting all crazy and stuff. And Mel Gibson's like, act crazy. You know, like, cursing stuff. You want me to curse? Because, you know, he's a pre he used to be a priest. He says he wants he wants me to curse. And Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix is like, no, no, no. Well, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just for show. So, they both they both run over. They both on either, either side of the house. And, and Mel Gibson's like, ah, I'm insane with anger. And then Walking Phoenix was like, it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna beat your ass, bitch. We're gonna tear your head off. And then, and then go back with Malcolm's like, I'm losing my mind. It's time for an ass whooping. And he's like, I cursed. And Walking Phoenix like, yeah, I heard it. And they notice that the person got on the roof very fast. And then also he shows like a quick, it cuts, they turn around that like, I guess he pretty much like it jumped way over them and then head back into the cornfields. And then they call the cops, and uh, they're talking with the the the, lead, uh, the police officer, the police officer, and saying it was it was very dark, and um, and we all think with Abigail Breslin, like she has this very particular thing, like she like teases one sip of a glass of water, but then she leaves it because like oh it's contaminated or there's dust or hair in it, and she like, leaves like glasses of water. Like all around the house, and with uh, Roy Cokins, he's asthmatic, um, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. He's he's pretty much an asthmatic, and nothing more to it. Or or, or war to warn this is I said I skipped over is that um, uh, Roy Cokin he killed his uh one one of his dogs because it was getting very aggressive towards um Abigail Breslin, so he had no choice but to kill it. So I had to, had to, I had to skip that part there. And then then they then they go they go into town and well before, before that they, they saw they see on TV that there's more crop circles and then they go into town and like they get like, like they split up like the kids they go to this library and they find um this alien this book about aliens and Mel Gibson he goes to the pharmacy to pick up um uh Roy, Roy Culkin's a prescription. Like, he's talking to the... the This uh, girl working there, and... Either she he used to be a priest, but he says, you know... Because she wants to uh, confess his sins to him. And even though he says, I'm not a priest, I have not been one for quite some time, but she still wants... She still persuades him to listen to her... To her what she has done. And then you get to... Uh, with where Walking Phoenix is, is, he goes into this... Um, army enlistment place... And the guy who, the, the army guy who was, like, sitting there talking to him, it was kind of, like, a weird thing. This is how the way he was been, I don't know, he's, like, he's, like, he's sitting there holding, like, this with his, uh, cup of coffee. And he's just, the way he's just explained, like, all these things. And, I don't know, it's how the way he was, like, a weird take on it. Well, of course, it's, 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 it's M. Night, what, what I expect, though. But, this is how that, how that one guy who was, he was talking to Walking Phoenix and explained also what Walking Walking thinks that he used to be a baseball player, and that even the, um, that he never went to the pros. He was a minor league baseball player, but um, he hit the most home runs, but he also got the most strikeouts as well. And he and because he's talking to one guy who knew who was there, who knew him, but he has the bat at home. That he hit this. That he hit um this. Uh, how many feet for that baseball went? I forget though. But and after that, they get together for some pizza, and then they see M Knight's character. What is the character's name? Ray Reddy. Red Reddy. So and then as they get back home, they Roy Cokin has his baby monitor, which he can use as a walkie-talkie, and um, literally picks up a signal to where to hear the aliens. As they get in the car, they you know to, to give a uh, much more higher signal. You can hear more like these clicking noises, like like that type of noise. 
And then by the nighttime comes uh, Mel Gibson. He hears some of the cornfields, the dogs barking. So he gets in the cornfields and and he said he gets the he gets the open space where one of the uh, crops where the crop circles is. Like you're wasting your time here. I'm not gonna report or anything that you do to my crops and to the place of the news or anything. You're not gonna get famous because he because th he thinks it's a, he thinks um that it's a prankster or something like that who's doing this. And then he's just walking back. Um, he hears like a noise behind him. He drops a flashlight. Which, of course, this is one of the moments I remember um, seeing back in the day from the commercial advertisements, the TV spots, or whatever. The moment one scene where he reaches down to get the flashlight and he, you know, hits the light and then you see something. And we're, which, that was the commercial, but it cuts away, though. But you see, he sees, like, a leg, the alien leg, go into the, into the crops and he gets scared and he runs back in. And then they finally get the chance to watch TV and they see all these, um lights in the sky which are UFOs. And he yeah, also get this good moment where um where um, Mel G Mel Gibson and Walking Phoenix are talking, you know, about uh coincidences like, you know about coincidences about gods and faith and all that and coincidences like seeing signs, seeing miracles, how they they have they have this good banter banter back and forth, how um about faith and all that. It's like um like when Walking Phoenix was telling um he was about to kiss this one girl, but he had gum in his mouth and then as he turned away, the girl pukes, but not him. He's like, oh, I maybe I wish I maybe I wish I maybe it was moved like faith. Otherwise, I would have got puked on as well. That sort of thing. So maybe it was faith or a miracle. And I like that the scene where they were talking back and forth about that scene right there. So. And then. Then the two kids, yeah, they make these little uh, aluminum foil helmets. You know, the aliens can't read their minds. And then Melkin gets a call from M. Knight. He says, Father. And then hangs up. So they, he goes over to his place. And of course, now to me, I, yeah, you get this, com he this conversation with him and M. Knight, which I said, M. Knight Shyamalan, as an actor, he cannot act. Talks like he's half asleep, just the way he's telling like, I have your phone number, been sitting on my table for the last few, for the last few months. They've been sitting there since then. It's just the way he, it's the way he talks. It sounds like he's half asleep. He's just going through the emo, he's just going through like a, an emotion, going through the motion, something like that. And which he talks like he has no emotion. He's just half asleep. That's why it's part of his name. He makes him want, makes me want to fall asleep. And yeah, he said he says like he's sorry for killing his wife, and he explains he's driving to a lake because the the aliens are not anywhere near water that they don't like it. And he says he's sorry, and he's like, "Don't open my pantry, father. I found one of them inside and locked him in." To me, I think they could they could have cut that cut his scenes out, all, any of or especially any of his scenes out because he's not he, he's not a good actor. He's a horrible actor, I would say. But like I said, but 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 as for him directing this movie, I thought he did a really good job with directing the movie. But since him as an actor, I just I, I just don't buy. So yeah. But then he get but he get to another but he get to another another um well it cuts back to Walking Phoenix watching TV right, and he he, he sees on the TV where where it's I believe it's in Brazil. And where this kid's a kid's birthday party, and they see something outside. The, they're in the, they're in the house. And they see the recording. And what's outside? And they see an alien walk by. Now here's now the thing is like okay, is the difference between this scene and then the next scene with Mel Gibson? It's okay. You get the idea that you know the music is going, which, which also which really see, especially with the music is, is by um, James Newton Howard. Um, I thought James Newton Howard did a really good job with the score. Especially for the opening scene, of like da 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 da. I thought he did. I thought he really did a really good job with the with the score. Um. Of where once again, for other films that he James Newton James Newton Howard has done, um, The Fugitive, which I enjoy. I enjoy The Fugitive, Space Jam, which I love. I love Space Jam. Um, he's done all the scores for Pretty Woman. Um. 
My Girl, um, no, this is The Fugitive, White Earp, Dante's Peak, yeah, Runaway Bride, The Sixth Sense, of course, uh, he also, which he also did Unbreakable 2, Treasure, Plan Treasure Planet, And I am I am Legend. And he's he's done a score. He's done scores on a lot of good on a lot of good movies. But yeah, I most remember his scores from the few mainly from the Fugitive and um, Space Jam. But but this but this, yeah. But I like how and also how the way that the opening tile pops up with the as the score goes. Like how the film starts, it's like silent, but then. Well, it's like, nah. but then as the title shows up, the the score immediately goes off. Bum ba bum, bum ba bum, bum ba bum. But <coughs> but but, yeah, but James and Howard all did a really good job with the score. But speak with the music, like between the, the scene where with the, the birthday party scene and the next scene with Mel Gibson, you get the idea that uh, okay. Now I'm, I was not scared by anything though, because the film was never meant to be that scary to me, but. You could tell that the music was getting higher and higher as the as the camera's panning in this one part where as soon as the the big reveal of the alien walks by, I mean I, I was like, yep, there they, there's 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 gonna be an alien, right? Because the music is getting higher and higher, and then by the next scene, which goes back to Mel, Mel Gibson in the M Night's house, and I like there was there was like no score, there was no score at all, even with when the alien appears, there's no score to that, and I like that that silly. It's like between the previous scene where you see you, hear, you know that something's gonna happen because the music is getting higher, but with Mel Gibson scene, it's all silent. I like that. I don't know why I just like that. How how the way that one scene is. He's because he sees something moving because you see a shadow where under the lighting underneath the door, and it's blocked up. And I always goes hello. And he, he keeps on going. He's like. Um, the police are here. I am with them. I am a police officer. I just want to talk to you. We know all about the hoax. We already took some of your friends downtown in a paddy wagon. I guess I thought he always does like this because he think that was a poor choice of words. Just tell us your name and why you did it, and we'll give you the same deal that we gave the you that we gave we gave them. Don't throw your wife. Don't throw you. Throw your life away, son. Because he thinks it's still a, it's all it's all still a hoax, but um and also I like where he gets the knife, and he see he sees a reflection from the knife to look what's inside the pantry, and he puts it back. Then he he's about to walk out, but then he goes back in and takes it again, and all of a sudden, boom! The alien the alien hand comes out and starts grabbing at him, and he cuts two and he cuts two of his fingers off, and here's a. The aliens scream and he screams like, because ah! he's because he's looking. I was that was that was that was a good scene as well. And as he gets back home, he explains he tells he asks his son about more about this book, and he like he like um, tries to make a vote where they go up and go to this lake and leave or stay here, in which. <laughs> He says my camel votes because originally Epic Branson was going to vote with him. And he he throws in his vote with his dead wife, and Roy Cohen Sam's like, "Well, that's bullshit." But then they all decide to stay home, and they're going to bore up all the houses. Not the houses. He decides to bore up the house. So they decide they bore up all the, all the windows and stuff, and they were they, they thought they're going to have like uh, one last family meal together, and like have like a favorite favorite. Um, Choice of meal, like um, Abigail Brands was gonna have a spaghetti, Roy Cohen was gonna have French toast, and um, Joaquin Phoenix was gonna have chicken teriyaki, and Milkins was gonna have a cheeseburger with bacon. And but then I get a good moment where, uh, like a an emotional moment where they were they wanted to pray, but um, and Roy Cohen says, "You know, I hate you. You kill mom." And he's like, "All right." Well, we're gonna enjoy this meal. We're gonna enjoy this meal. We're not gonna waste more moment of praying. Stop crying. And they they all start crying. And 
I did thought that was a uh, like a, a a quick fight moment where they were they were they were, they were hug hug together and and um Mel and he Mel he goes and grabs Joaquin Phoenix to put uh, to make him cry with them. So, but then the, then they know that the alien the the TV is going blank and the air are on the on the baby monitor. So no, it's happening. And the aliens have already the aliens have already arrived and um, they're born at the last second. And they forgot to take their dog in with them, so they have no choice but to hear outside the dog bark until you hear the aliens kill their dog. It is, it is, it is. And I thought it was a subtle way because he didn't have to show you them actually killing the dog, just hear from the dog's noises outside. You know, you hear it barking and it goes, the, 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 from barking to cries and then silence. And then you see their shadows walk by the windows, or banging on the doors. And also you get this moment where, first um, he tells about with um, Abigail Branson how the way she was born, then Roy Culkin was born. And and um, even there was a deleted scene where, um, where he how he talks what, um, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix when, when, when they were both kids, and how he, um, how when Mel Gibson was a kid he popped his brother's arm out of socket and he didn't cry and all that like that that wasn't that wasn't a deleted scene or another deleted scene with the attic door where they left it on board so they had to get someone to prop it up so the aliens won't get in and then he leads into the, and then it leads into the basement and they, they try to get someone to pry with and they the they, um um um, Walking Phoenix actually breaks a light bulb and it cuts to the dark and Morikoko gets a flashlight and they're, 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 they're finding another way in and they're saying there was, there was a coal chute and they see that they're, that um, Roy Culkin is staying right behind it and the, an alien hand that can camouflage itself like a chameleon, you know, camouflage with the coal chute uh, grab, grabs Roy Culkin and then I like how they drop the flashlight and it just focuses on the flashlight on the ground, and you can hear what's what's happening. I like the little more where, yeah, I where it was like um, well, actually, and actually, that, that didn't work either. But I just like how the way it was, how the way it was, how it was shot. You just focus on that flashlight on the ground, you hear what's going on. You know, like they drop they drop the flashlight, and you hear Mel Gibson walking things like, "Hold him! You got me! You got him! Hold him! I got! I got him!" So and the they and Walking Phoenix is putting he's stacking up bags of dog food, blocking it up, and you know, like this is like this one can of soup. He just goes and puts that up there. So the, the those teens little moments of that I thought was pretty funny. But then um, Roy Culkin he forgot his he doesn't have his mess, and so and I like how um uh, Mel Gibson he's trying, he's trying to get you know to you know breathe. Uh, you know both breathe, breathe together, and uh, he starts blaming guys like you know I hate you. I hate you. Um, and then it gets a little, and you get a little bit of the scene where, um, where Mel Gibson with his wife, which it's only the first beginning of this flashback scene, but it gets to like the next scene later. And then he, Mel Gibson wakes up, and Walking Phoenix is here, is listening on the radio. Saying like um, a lot of people did die, and there's like some kind of a gas thing or something, and the aliens they 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 left, even though they left some of their own uh, behind though. And so they so they go they go back upstairs. Um, Mel Gibson wants to get the TV, and you see for the most of the part you see the alien from the reflection of the TV, and. And then he cut. He cuts back to, um, with Mel Gibson t uh, talking with his wife, who is pinned to the car thanks to Emily Shyamalan, before she dies. And then he cuts back to like um, the the bat the, to Walking Phoenix is bad. You know Merle. That, that was his, that's the character's name. Merle it says, "Swing away, Merle. Merle, swing away." And which was something that his wife. I think which is something that his wife told him, you know, tell Meryl to swing, swing away. And all this, and all this is like, also the story how it depicts on, like, on the face of God and stuff like that. 
I was perfectly fine with that. Like how it's like oh, it's all coincidence how with all with uh, Abigail Branson with a glass of water that they man they managed just to help out defeat that alien or um or it was like what was there was another thing that that was like um. Uh, like a coincidence, because that's what it said. It said, it said coincidences, and and how the coincidence, how they happen, not to like water, because when um, Walking Fix hits hits the, the alien with the bat, a glass of water falls on it, burns, it melts like burns like the the alien like acid, and even the the look of the alien itself is CG though, but it's yeah, I would say the CG is not that great because. Yeah, that's that, that's the type of, that's a, that's the type of CG that did not age, that does not age well. Even though it's from all the way back in two thousand two, the CG on the alien is not all that great. As you can as you can clearly tell. But um, and the alien before that, the alien tried to give some poison to the the sun. And Abigail Abigail Breslin screams. But uh, the poison didn't get into him, and uh, like what um. Mel Gibson takes him outside, and um, Bucky Phoenix goes and fights the alien. He gets more glass of water on him until you see like from the alien's viewpoint, he gets knocked back, and a glass of water just falls right on his face, and, and you see it once again from the, t on the on the TV reflection. It's it, it's dead, and it breaks the and it also breaking uh, Merrill's bat as well, and and then the Mel is like you know outside is like. Uh, no poison got in. His lungs were closed. His lungs were closed. No poison got in. Until his uh, son says, you know, Dad, and he knows that his, his son is now alive and well. And he's like, did somebody, is like, did somebody save me? And he's like, yeah, someone did. And I, and I like that how it was this focus, and how it was on this one family. And, they, and then as, and, uh, as the camera pans, that time has passed and it's snowing outside. And Mel Gibson is now back to being a priest again. So yeah, I I enjoy science. To me, yeah, this was the, definitely was like the last good film that M I Shyamalan has done, and for the for the for this film, I think he did a good job. Besides the part with his, with him, him himself starring in it, though. Yeah, there, there yeah there besides there's a few nitpicks like yeah besides M Night though, but the C G on the alien and some of the uh, awkwardness here and there. Of course, it's uh, that's probably like. A little bit awkward before uh, the rest of his movies come out, but I enjoy Science. I thought Mel Gibson did a good job. Joaquin Phoenix did. Abigail Breslin was good. Roy Culkin, I thought he was he was average. Um, I thought this before back in the Macaulay Culkin was still better though. But I thought Roy Culkin was he was average. He was there. Um, the directing and writing by M Night pretty much is like the last good script that he would he would do before all of his before the rest of his horrendous films come out. And some and I thought I thought it was an interesting take, you know, with the crop circles and I like how he made like a low a low profile alien invasion movie. Like I said, low profile or um, a quiet or subtle alien invasion movie. It didn't have to make it all like all bunch of aliens come down and start destroying everything. No, you see like a few aliens here, and you saw like a few lights in the sky. What was on TV? It didn't have to be an over the top alien invasion movie. It was like much more of a quiet, because it's focusing on this family and their farm, almost in this a wide open farm. So it's pretty much like they're the only people living in the middle of nowhere, basically. So and, and I and I like that. I thought it was an I was, I was an interesting thing. So I I do give some kudos to M Night Shyamalan for this. So yeah, Science I do en I do enjoy Unbreakable. I enjoy the Sixth Sense. I thought it was I thought it was um all right, but it was but Sixth Sense is definitely better than the rest of his movies he's done. I would definitely say that. So technically, the three films that he did that he did was good was Sixth Sense, then Unbreakable, and then Science, and that's it. Three films. Along with the rest of a wall, what six movies he's done since then? He hasn't done a good film since 2002, and that was Signs. Yeah, so six films. Yeah, he got The Village, going by year date, then Lay in the Water, then The Happening, um, The Last Airbender, After Earth, and then The Visit. And now going into his next film, Split. 
I'm not gonna see Split. I've I I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty after the visit I'm done with Emma Shamwa now. I'm done with it. With him. I'm I don't wanna see Split. Even if I do, it'll probably it'll just probably end up being another rant another rant on M Night and if I the, the visit to me is pretty much the final straw but if I do see Split though I know it's going to be another another rant I probably even know but but yeah The Sixth Sense it's 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 an alright movie but 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 I still say it's definitely better than all the rest of the movies he's done I enjoy Unbreakable and I enjoy this film yeah Mel Gibson, I enjoy. Joaquin Phoenix, I liked. The score, I thought was, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was well, it was a well done score by James Newton Howard, and it's a decent, and it's, and it's decently, decently well paced. I don't think it's, it's not very fast though, but it's, it's, it goes at a good pace, I would say, and some interesting ideas, and I thought for the for. For M. Night, uh, M. Night's writing on the script, I thought it was the last good script that he did. Last good film he directed and the last good script that he that he wrote. Ever since Signs, all of his films have gone to hell, basically. I basically have had with I, mean, I hate the rest, I, I hate the rest of his movies. He's now with the, he's now on the on my list of the worst directors. But I mean, if, if people have, if people, if people like uh, uh, the rest of M Night's films, that's fine. It's, their, it's your own opinion, though. But to me, Science is the last was the last good film that he's done. I hate the village. I hate, absolutely hate laying the water. The happening I could watch as a comedy that I could laugh my ass off at, <laughs> even though it was supposed to be a horror film, but. The last M last Airbender sucked. Then After Earth sucked, and then the Visit sucked even more. I'm just I just have my I'm just up to here with M Night now. But yeah, but if, if anyone likes this movie, so that's fine. That's cool. But I'll just watch this film, then Unbreakable, and even I'll give it another glance at, some, at the Sixth Sense as well, because that was. Still like bet the sixes is still better than all of the rest of his movies still, but but if anyone was has not seen Signs or is anyone who is a fan of M Night Shyamalan, we probably probably have probably has seen the film but anyone who has not seen the film, I would advise checking it out. And especially I I enjoy Mel Gibson as an actor, even though in the past he's done a lot of crazy crap though. But we all make mistakes. Even I make mistakes sometimes. By by you know talking too fast and starting my mumbling, starting my words though. But I know I know all the things in the past he's the last he has done like the DUIs and stuff like that. And but there, besides all that though, I still enjoy Mel Gibson as an actor. Of all the things, of all the films he's done, the Mad Max films, the Lethal Weapon movies, uh, so many other oh so many other movies, but. But just I would advise giving a look. If you if you like alien movies, I would say it's worth the time to watch. But anyway, that's my review on Signs. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on the next movie review. And like I said, last good film that M. I. Shemlin did to me. Later.